to anyone on the internet who may be watching. Uh, it's Paul here, and I am going to try to show the quickest way to get stuff set for UV mapping. So I'm going to delete the default cube here, and I'm going to import a wavefront object. Yeah, object and vehicles. And I'm just going to pick this car model I have here. It takes a little while to import. <laughs> and I could probably pause this. Oh, I didn't need to pause it. It happened fast enough. And what I'm going to do is select all of this and scale it down. Alright. And. What to do is just use the body because it's a complex shape. Just to show a quick uh, delete all the other junk. So I just have the car body here, nothing else. <laughs> just as a reference because it's a complicated shape. And the idea here is how fast can we get this UV mapped and texture paint a complicated, funky, weird shape. So. Basically what we do is we have our object and we switch to the UV editing layout which is generally set up just to do this quickly and select our object and go into edit mode and you'll see the other window there's like one little pixel and technically that's where all the UVs are right now but a little dark spot but so that means you gotta have your UVs mapped to this and they aren't at the moment because they're all just one single point. Generally what you do is you create a texture and save it. So it would be like car body map or something. And generally have to pick a texture more or less based on the density or something. So 2048. And powers of 2 usually work well. So and I usually do a color here, something funky, and <laughs> just so you see this on there, I don't really need alpha for this. And we can generate a texture. And normally at this stage when you generate a texture, you would save it right away, but in this case I'm not going to worry about it. Because <laughs> sometimes it will glitch and stuff if you don't save it, and you just save and refresh your texture. In this case, we're not worried about that, so we go to the Shading UVs tab, and the fastest way to do it is Smart UV Project. As far as things go, I usually mess with the island margin. How much you want generally depends on the size of the image map you're applying it to. And the other things, I tend not to mess with too much, so I'll just do like 9 or 12, and click that, OK. And it should generate a map. And there you go. The one thing uh, you might want to know about this is that it doesn't always pack the most efficiently. Like there are spaces inside of other spaces. So it considers like draw a box around the bound of each island and that's the space. It doesn't fit stuff in that box. If you can imagine a box around each island. So technically if you were to manually repack this on your own and change the layout you could get more resolution per island just by making things slightly larger and packing them inside each other. <laughs> so that's something to be aware of. And also, uh, what else should I say here? Sometimes these maps aren't always human readable. That's another thing. But in this case, we got lucky. You can pretty much tell what the shapes and parts of this car body are. So it's not too hard to figure out if you're just painting on this side. So we got lucky in that regard, and now to set up for painting, I usually just go back to the default view, and we want to create a texture, just a texture of this, because we're right now we're in Blender Render, so creating a texture here, we just create a new texture, image removal is fine, and then we pick the image, which is our body map. And we can actually go to Textured View and it shows it. And right 
right now we have shady multi textured shadeless, but if we go to edit mode or what is it? Texture paint, it may make a difference if it's shadeless or not. So we see our texture here and right now we can actually paint on this because it's been UV mapped. So you can draw in here. I'll get you good, and if we go to uh, UV editing, we can see where on our map it's been painted. And sometimes, like around edges and stuff, you'll see like weird little odd spots, and the painting for some reason doesn't always overlap. And part of this you can change in the painting options, which is bleed right here, the bleed setting, you can increase the bleed. And also, here, if for some reason it's not catching all the faces or something, but you know the general island it is hitting. What you can do is go on this side and go down here instead of view mode, change this to paint mode. And if we turn on tools, you can technically paint with the brush over here and see I wanna paint this vendor and you know, here see it shows up right here and you can see where the islands and stuff are. And the thing is, is the color on this side that paints is also the same color here, so you can just move around on both screens and paint back and forth. And where else did that go? <laughs> oh, down here, I guess. Okay. Yeah, it wrapped around down here, so I want this blue down here. I can go down here and paint it over this. And notice right now the shading and the shadows, the view. So if I use the color picker, it, it actually gets the shadows. So I go here and go to shading. This is where you want to turn on. Well, right now it's. That. If we change texture, we can switch to shadeless. Then you see it's a flat color. And that means it picks the exact color, there's no shadow, so you, that green you get will be the green here. As where if you were to go in a solid view, you can see it's... But you can also hit textured solid. The thing is, is this is different for both cycles and uh, Blender Render. And it's this, we might also want to do our painting in cycles for some reason or other. Right now we're in Blender Render, you can just go switch to Cycles Render and you see you lost everything. Sort of, but not quite. So compositing. And we see our textures here, but we gotta turn on our nodes. Use nodes and right now that color is not there. But if we just add texture, image texture, and click on the little left side here, you'll see that the body map comes up. So you just click that, drag that over, plug it in. I'll switch back to the default view and you can see it is showing up now in cycles as well. So you can switch back and forth and it'll work with, between both. And usually when you work between both cycles and uh, Blender, you might want to make the nodes mode in the internal. And I did another video on it, so I'm not going to show too much of that. But you can paint in cycles just as fine as you do any other one. And, uh, what else is there? <laughs> I'm trying to think. There's a lot of neat stuff in here, but I wanted to keep it quick and see that's how you get it set up. Once you're happy with your texture, well, you can go... Usually it's in the image view. So you can switch this to image view, but if, if you're happy with the texture layout, you just make sure you have the right one selected and you save it. So you paint and you save it and paint. And that's pretty much it. And you can paint a sculpture or anything else in that matter. And that's the fastest way to get going on textures and make sure you're set up. <laughs> I know there's other videos. I hope I wasn't too long, so that should be it for now.